Welcome everybody to the Shoot for the Stars convention. We are back. Hi, Linda. Hi. Hi. So this is this is very exciting. This is something we have been waiting for and excited about. And Linda, this is your workshop that we are doing on pouring bisque dolls. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things that have to do with it. You have been doll making for 45 years. Linda, there's a reason why I believe she's the best in the biz and why she's teaching today. She's good. And we're going to learn from you. Thank good. you for sharing. Thank you. There's so many questions that, I, that a lot of us have that are, that are new to this. A lot of us are new to this. So I'm going to get out of the frame and we're going to learn from Linda and you're going to do your thing, girlfriend. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're going to talk about the very basics of pouring. And to me, this is an art form in itself. And you, it's one of the very first steps when you start making dolls to learn. Why? Because this is the way it's cheaper for you. <laughs> Be very bl blunt and honest. Because if, if you can pour your own dolls, if you make a mistake, oh well, don't keep it and keep fussing with it. Put it in the trash and pour another one. So we're going to start out with the very basics. This is a mold, a plaster mold. There are two other steps or three other steps to get before we can even have a doll. Is We have to have it sculpted. Then they, from sculpting, they make a rubber casing. The rubber casing, you pour plaster in, which this is the plaster, and you band these together. And so there's three steps before we even get to this step. We're lucky enough to have people produce these for us. And there's all different companies. Um, there's many different molds of the same doll that's been reproduced. If it's an antique, you might have four di different companies making the same doll. But the, there's a trick here. There's also the different companies that make slip. And we're going to use this slip today. Um, right now, today we have three companies that I know of that's producing slip. One's New York Doll Products, tr um, the Doll Shop in Denver, and the Bell Company, Bell Ceramics in Texas. I pour with two different types of slip, to be honest with you at home. This one I'm pouring with today because I know it releases faster. It's also a little bit um, softer slip. First thing when you get slip, if you get it from New York Dolls Products, you can have it ordered in and they come in bags and he, Rick will put them in the large flat rate bag and he ships um, slip that way. And you can get three in a large bag. Um, box. I excellent way to get your slip if you do not pour a lot of slip. But I use gallons and I keep my gallon jugs even if they become empty. And this is what slip looks like. It's liquid. First things first, if it if it's a brand new, let's put this, if it's brand new and it's a gallon jug and it's been sitting for a while, the slip will adhere to the sides. One of the ways you can get it loose, make sure the lid is on, is to push it like so and roll it. That will help the process of getting it to be released. Then, the next step, cleanliness is the most important thing in pouring. I don't care what you say, you'll see me cleaning constantly. Why? Because when it dries, if it flecks off, then you've got a little bump or spot. You need to make sure that this is thoroughly mixed. And it takes some muscle. 
Where did I buy the spatula? Uh, anywhere you can buy tools. If it works, you use it. Now, because of the high climate altitude we have here, I always have to mix my slip the day before because of air bubbles, because it just creates a lot of air bubbles. And air bubbles create little pits in your greenware, which end up, if you, they aren't detected, become pits in your bisque. Okay, if you can look at this, it's like cream. If it's thicker than that, depending on the company, you need to thin it. And there's different ways. Most of it, they'll say, use distilled water. Why distilled water? Because it doesn't have minerals in it. Mineral deposits, if I pour and use from my well water, it can make little specks, little circles, weird little animals on my bisque. Okay. I always clean this. Okay. Then you always burp. And, oh, there it is. Look at that. We got an air bubble. Can you see the air bubble? They're gone. The next thing I'm going to do is, I don't care whether it's a colored slip. Right now, the, the trend is we only have, like, the companies have like three or four different whites. And then they might have a bis tone, which is um, a flesh tone. But I'm making sure all of the bubbles are gone. There's a discoloration even in this white, and I hope you can see it. See, there's a darker color. I need to swirl this so there's no discoloration. Okay, now I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to put the lid on it. Let's talk about our molds and mold care. I brought different size molds so you can see there's different ways you pour each mold. This happens to be a Diana Efner 14 inch portrait one. If you can see that when I get a mold and I have all these molds out in the shop on cases, it's easier for me to detect this, but all of them are always marked. Hopefully you can see this on. Most mold companies will always mark in print in their plaster what they are but that's hard to see so I always do this and then I always store all of my molds on a shelf and yes I store them outside but when I pour on mold I leave them in my heated pour room and let them dry thoroughly before I put them back out so mold care I've unbanded I always store them vertically with the table. If you noticed when I took the bands off, I did it this way. I did not turn them this way like that. That will cause you to have a breaking and it will cause your pore to pop out and be a blowout. And then it creates a little bit of a bubble and it's harder to clean. So take care of your molds and don't let them. And then when you put them together, you don't slap them together this way. You will put them together when they're flat. But while it's open, what you always do, I don't care whether you've poured that day or not, clean your molds. And this is a, you can use this mold brush or you can use a mop any brush but mainly I'm making sure it's perfectly clean no specks I can smell the dust that's why I'm pushing it down it does absolutely no good and I've seen beginners do this like to get it clean next thing trusty spritz 
not quite that much. No. Nope. There. It's a, a mist. What this does is so many, if you do not mist it and your mold is too dry, you'll get a little circle on the nose or on the ear and it just helps. Here again, I'm putting it down. These are rubber bands. We also have straps. I personally use my hips and tummy and the table. Also on molds, they always say, usually say face, and you can see I have an F. If they don't have this, I mark this. It's very important when you're pouring, and I'll talk about it later. Here's a different type of shoulder plate, and it's for that 14 inch doll. Okay, we're going to talk about, this is the Portrait Jumeau head that is at the end of the table for the articulated body. Now, I clean this mold before I put it away, but can you see that little fragment right there? That is what we're trying to get out. If that was left in there, it's dry. And when you put the wet slip in, it would lift out and be hard and leave a hole. This is the difference. When you're purchasing molds, see what other heads, bodies, whatever, go with it. You can also see these are little balls. They match here. And that's important, especially if you get into figurines. Some of our molds are five and six parts. And so, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay. We've cleaned. When I got this first gallon of slip, I always strain all of my slip. I don't care where I get it. They all have lumps. And a lump creates a big problem because when it goes through, it goes clunk and it can cause a problem in your the outcome of your greenware. So I went ahead and I strained it, but my habit is, the reason I have two gallons, is I'm going to pour it in here and I'm going to drain it in this other gallon. This, and I, this is my strainer. If you don't, can't find a strainer like this, this is what I used years and years ago. And I still use it. An old fashioned kitchen strainer that I formed. And this is how I let it go through and strain it. What it also prevents is any dry chips going in. Now, I'm gonna check this again, make sure that there's no swirls. Here's the face. I'm looking at the angle and how I'm going to pour. I'm going to start here with an even, consistent pour. Hopefully, I'm going to end and I'm going to try to aim on and hit this side and let it go in. The reason, because if there's any air bubbles, it will probably break. Okay. So. 
And what I have learned over the years is I personally, as a woman, use my hips, the molds, <laughs> the jugs, anything I can to save my arms. By the end of the day, you're exhausted. I'm going to go clear to the top. I'm not hesitating. I'm letting it go. Okay. I'm going over here. I'm going to go clear to the very top. The reason is right there is where the shoulder plate ends. This helps it from warping. I'm going to stop right there. Mainly the best thing when you're starting out is to know how long it takes your slip to set up and weather does play a big part in it. If it's real cold and damp, it takes longer for it to set up. It takes longer for it to release in the mold too. So I'm going to, we call it burping. This helps again. What we're going to wait for is that, can you see right here how it's the moisture is being pulled out of the slip by the mold, the plaster, and it's starting to get real thick. I'm going to wait until it gets about a nickel. It's not there. And you just take a little chunk. I personally know that it's not going to, it's going to be, um, this slip will, will be ready to release early, but if this would completely sink down in there, you would have to refill this cavity to make sure that the neck opening is as thick as the top. Now we're just going to wait a few minutes. How do you tell on here? I just move it this way. See, it's still a dime. Shoulder plates need to be just a little thicker, but there's this fine line. When I first started out pouring, I would try to pour like five or six molds. Then what happens is you can't get them all drained in time, and then you have little bowling balls and you don't want a bowling ball. <laughs> we want nice, perfect pours. So always take like two or three molds and know what you're pouring. If I'm pouring a body, I always pour the biggest part first, or the torso. Then I would pour the legs. Then I would pour the arms. And then I would empty the arms first, then the legs, and then the torso because usually the arms are going to be like a little thicker than a dime depending on the size. The legs are going to be a little bigger. Think of a, a little chicken egg versus an ostrich egg. The ostrich egg is thicker and heavier. A body has to be, the bigger the cavity, the thicker it needs to be to support it. If it's not, it will go chink and cave in. So even though you might get it out of the mold, it might say, uh-uh, in the, in the firing process, okay? So we are, it's sunk in, and right there you see. Okay, I'm ready to go. This is when you get really, the face is always down. Reason is, we want a nice, even pour when we went in. I do not want it to glug, and I'm hope I could, I could make it glug. If you pour too fast, you'll have it go. I want you to watch. Maybe it'll do it there. It's starting to do it, but it will make this horrible noise. If it does that, you more than likely have a collapsed head or whatever you're pouring. 
You want a nice What I did is put air in there to help it come out and keep it up on the outside edge of our mold. need a lot of supplies. Stan got me these beautiful little pieces of wood. The only thing you need is an opening for it to drain. Can you see where it's still draining? And just a little bit longer. Not much. This is going to be different. Now you can see when you're waiting, you're going to be planning in your head. Not only are you planning when you um, are pouring, you're thinking, how am I going to string this doll? Do I use a cloth body? Um, do I peg it? Do I string it from head to leg across? Look and see. They give you clues because of the original doll that was pegged, she'll have a hole. She'll have a little indentation, and we'll talk about that. But I'm not going to tip this this way. I'm going to turn it so I won't have, hopefully, a lot of porcelain all over the place. I always use go both ways. Now, this is when it comes. I change the distance so it drains. While this is draining in here, now I can pour from this jug that I mixed and was ready. So I'm going to, here again. I backed off because it almost filled that hole. If it does that, you could have a, a bubble form in there or a hesitation line. And there it went. Now I'm going to go here. Can you see this speck right there? That came from somewhere even though this was clean. That is why I always strain my slip. Do not put this porcelain wire down your drain. <laughs> Take it out and put it in your flower bed. It's excellent for your flower beds because it will clog your drains. <laughs> okay, so while this is setting up, we're going to talk about getting the slip ready for these little dolls. What we're going to do, I want you to notice, we're ready to empty the, uh, the portrait chimo and the shoulder plate, but take a look at what I got out what I strained and everything was clean so that's why I got in the habit of always straining as when I empty my molds I like to get this one started this one sometimes you have to it's not wanting to come so I'm going to use cocktail straw. Right. 
sounds awful, but has to be done. <laughs> Okay, see there's a bubble still in there? It's not open. Always check and recheck. Okay. Here we go. This is ready. I can tell on the side. And I'm just going to go like so. Okay, now we're talking about these little dolls. Now, this is Maggie. She was a convention doll. Hmm. What year was it? It says 2014. Doll artists and good. And she's pictured right here. She's really cute. She's very, very small. But when you have a small Albis doll, they require you to thin your slip. Now, the process of cleaning the molds, exactly the same thing. This is her head, believe it or not. There's her torso. This is the pore hole. This is the pore hole for the head. Now, personally, when I'm pouring, I set mine up, like I said, big, little, and I pour that way. Okay, this is the leg and arm mold. And it was really nice that they put this mold all in one rather than have a leg mold and an arm mold and then have extra on your shelf and harder to keep, locate everything. The trick here, we talked about an arm mold. Well, here's the pour holes there. So we got to pour let, let it, and drain it and let it drain for a while and then flip it and then pour the legs and let them set up, drain, and so it takes a little longer. It's an extra step. Let's talk about it. I always use kitchen stuff. This is our slip. This is creamy. Look at how creamy it is. But it's a little too thick. So. I'm going to mix it, thin it, and it's not much, maybe, I'm going to start out maybe a teaspoon. See how much different it's runnier. Hey, face. I, I swirled it just like any other thing. I 
I didn't lift up because that can cause air bubbles. And now these, these are the legs. It filled one leg and now it's going over to the other. Pour to the top. There's two little air bubbles. I'm going to get them out. And now we're going to wait just a few minutes. This will be about a dime thickness. Then we're going to drain it in here. It doesn't make any difference because we, you thinned it with water, so it's not going to affect any of your bigger pouring. It's just that when you're pouring little dolls, you either separate it out or sometimes I even have to use a syringe, a medical syringe. You stack it up in there and then you shove it down in there. That way it forces it to go all the way through and down into the armholes because sometimes you'll get a pour that will only pour to here and the hands won't be. Or the hands will be there and the upper arms won't. For some reason there's a bubble or something, but a syringe, if you're having problems, try, try a syringe. We're going to watch. This will definitely, definitely use the cocktail straw. And you can buy these at the grocery store. <laughs> you don't have to. Just a little too thin. This particular little doll has cut out eyes, so you want and have enough greenware that when you set the eyes and the plaster in it, it doesn't bust it. So always make sure that you do pour thick enough, but not too thick. That's, it's sort of like putting enough flour in your bread. If you don't get the right consistency, and the only way you learn this is by practicing and learning. And you'll learn because one day I'll pour and it's cold and the next day it's hot and I have to pour I have to pour faster and I can pour less. In other words, I can only have two molds in, in the holding pan or waiting instead of three. Okay. One of the problems when you thin it there is I do with my straw. That's ready. Okay. Remember when I said that you're studying your mold also before when you're cleaning? I know that the pore holes go this at an angle like this. So I can't just stick it in because if I do, I will poke the greenware. And you can fix it. But... Now you can see that this greenware now has no sheen compared to the sheen that's on here. So I've turned it over 
and I'm going to let these air dry. In other words, the hole get more air in. I'm checking this head. It emptied and filled. Taking my straw. To make sure. I've checked the molds and we are going to check them and see if they're ready. This is the portrait Jamo. Keep them banded. And what you're going to do is clean the pour hole out. Got to be careful here again. Remember, you are studying your molds and see if it's dry enough. Usually, I have a trash can, but I'll just use it that way. I'm going to put it down and I'm going to see if it's ready to go. If I can lift it up easily, no, it's not coming. That's okay. Reband it and wait. But this needs to be taken care of. See how it's starting to separate right here? That's good. But I'm going to also clean it off. And I know, remember, I said that this is where it ends. Right there. That's so I know that I can do this to get this shoulder plate to release. But I'm going to reach under here. It will release, and when it releases, it will fall. So I'm going to like so. Oh, it just fell. It just came out. Right like that. Now I'm going to let it sort of scarred right here, and I wasn't expecting it. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm taking a quick clean brush, which is, they come in four or five, sometimes six different sizes. It's a very soft bristle brush, and I'm going to dampen it, blot it, and go across, and you go in an X form. These could also, you can also use a brush called the Tibbs brush. Either one will get the job done, and you're fine for right now. Now let's go. I'm going to make sure that these molds are clean. I'm going to set them aside. Okay. Let's go to the portrait Jamo. See if it's ready. Perfect. Remember what I said about always if lifting it up. This is my face down here. PE means for me pierce ears through head. You want that to fall away from the head. Okay, it's not wanting to release. We'll let it sit for a little bit. Meanwhile, we'll do the portrait one. Ha! Ah, there she is. He is. No. 
Okay, there. Very soft. We have to cut that area out. We're going to put this one here. A lot of times if you tap them, there, there she is. I'm going to put her over here. We, I see one little thing. Shoulder plate. You want the scraps or the spares or whatever to not try, go in because they could scar your greenware. I'm not going very deep. I'm just separating it. Lifted it up. I like using the straw for where it connects in, so I just go straight in. It's damp. This is called a double balled stylus and I'll and it went through. It popped out into my hand. Always wet your tools. This is the scalpel. And I'm just scoring it. Years ago we used to take it completely off. And we'd let the greenware dry, and then immediately we would start cleaning it. It was the dry method. We do not recommend it because that gets into your your lungs. So we saw fire or china fire this greenware. This is Maggie, and we have to pour her little arms yet. And this is the head. So, Because we thin this slip, it might take a little longer. This might not release because of the moisture in it. Did. Now, I can tell. Yeah. This is the little body. So cute. I am going to take, and if you look real close, you can see where they told you where to put your holes and one here. Center it.
Okay. My hands are wet. I'm letting it sit for a second. There's her cute little head. I know. I'm going to take this off because her head is round and less likely to warp unless it's really, really wet and your slip is too wet. Go ahead and I always seal. Just this is sort of like when you making a pie crust and you take and wet your fingers. Okay, we're gonna let this sit and dry for a few minutes. We're gonna come back and clean the seams. Oh, I forgot something. We forgot the little hole there. It really helps if you remember everything as you go. Okay. I was looking for the cocktail straw, but I don't want it. Make sure your fingers are dry when you pick this up. There. Use your quick clean brush. My finger is too big for this. There we are. We have, let's poke this out. If it dries in there, it won't hurt anything. So we'll let that sit. Okay, you can see because of the slip being wet, this is gonna be harder to clean. See the residue where it leaked a little bit more? Cannot stress, do not ever leave your molds open. Very rarely do we leave our molds open because they warp and they're wet and they need to be banded shut and put flat. Take care of your molds, they'll take care of you. Remember what I said, we're going to have to pour the arms. We'll do that later. But I need to move this band out and see if we can get the little legs out. There they are. I like doing this. I didn't do it very hard. And I'm going to make sure that these holes are big enough. And 
and that's how we're going to do it. I'm not messing around with that too much. Right, I'll fix it later. Lift it straight out. Oh. Oh, but you see we got a little issue here, right there. Just told me, oh, Linda. Cocktail straw. And that's all you do. And we're going to seal, clean this, and pour the arms. And then our doll is ready to work on the seams in a few minutes. Now we're ready to um, open the arms of this. And we're going to clean, put it down flat. Hopefully it will lift. There they are. You can see it tells me that we need to do our straws. You can do it. I'm going to use the other, yeah, this other end. Sometimes these just need a little push. Hmm. Not ready to come out, but I see a spot here that I can go ahead and fix. There. We're just going to let them rest and you'll see them be they'll start pulling away and then we'll be able to lift them out and put them in the the drying box until we can go ahead and clean their seams and get them ready to uh, soft fire which or china fire which I fire mine at an 019 because it's not so hard and with this type of slip it's easier and it's softer. It, it's more like the old-fashioned way. Years and years ago we didn't soft fire. We just had a lot of dust and it created a big health problem. Gave um, a lot of doll makers passed away because they had lung problems. So the soft fire method is cleaner and we paint with um, glycerin instead of a lot of the oils. A lot of people still, even China painters, we still use the oil method and turpentine. But mainly, always, always use the soft fire clean method on um, cleaning your greenware because of the dust. Even with this, we have some dust, but we clean under water. We clean and keep them wet, and then we clean them, and then we put them in water again. So this is the process when we clean them, but that's a completely different subject. So we're going to let this. This is starting to separate. You can see how it's separating right there. Ah, there it is. This is not shown. It's just starting right there. So I'm going to wait a little bit. Right there. You can see it. Nope. Okay, we're ready now. This has been drying for a little while. And it's it's not going to um, bend that much. I mean, 
if it was wet you could definitely squish it and I'm just going to show you a few of the on these few of these pieces what you're going to do remember I wanted you to see on this shoulder plate the difference I am going to score this I can also move it this is why I like these pop crates or whatever you want to call them This is still, will absolutely melt away in water if I put it in water at this point. Remember that. Now, we need to decide if we're going to have sew holes. This goes on a cloth body. So if we want sew holes, we aren't going to glue it on the body. We need to decide where we want them. This is a little big. This is when the cocktail straw comes very handy. Then the new doll mother, whoever she might be, can decide if she wants the sew holes to be bigger or because they definitely. Here again. I've squished this there. Let's repurpose this straw. Aha. We want it about there. Remember, I'm going in and getting it wet. I'm just going to push that out. It's not near as fragile, but it is still fragile. I'm trying to line these up. That's why I keep looking back and forth. Okay. Now, I'm going to let this dry. When I soft fire it, put it in the kiln, when I bring it out, this will literally pop off because I've scored it. The same process as we did with this. Let's see if I can... It's, it's not dry enough. But when these pop off, they will be cleaned and I will go ahead and on this raw edge this would be the raw edge I would go ahead and start taking my finger like this and I would sand that down and make it smooth now let's talk about remember on the port uh, portrait Jamo I had it pierced through the ears, I use the double ball stylus and I happen to use the number the uh, master eye beveler. Get it wet, let it drip down and push gently. If it's split a little bit, all you have to do is go like that. Flip it over. Did it go all the way through? Probably not. You can use this as a Kemper tool. It's a lace draping tool too. Yes, it went through. You definitely need to check it. Now, this is a lace draping tool. It's a master eye beveler. Sort of just like you're knocking off the very top of that seam line. 
clean it on a sponge. Take one of your quick clean brushes, Tibbs brush, whatever. Damp. Go across this way. Go across this way. And magically, your seam pretty much disappears. What I have discovered, if I don't let my greenware, this is very damp still, but it's hard. If it doesn't get too hard and damp, if I do this, you won't even see a seam line. I'm going to clean around the little ears. Any imperfection that you see, remember X. Do not go like with the seam because you're telling porcelain has a memory, remember? And I do not want the seam, they call it popping. I don't want it to raise up and be a pain because that's ugly. Then we have to do a lot of work. I'm cleaning this out as best as I can. Be sure to make this that I've sealed it. I always, for my reason, this this slip here, I fire it as a six. Some slips you fire at a seven. The reason I put the color of the slip on the greenware piece, if I accidentally break an arm, and this is a whole body, I know that if I put a wash on it, immediately I can look and see. It could be French Bess, it could be FB, it could be European White, it could be Lady White, Pure White. PW is pure white. I know immediately when I look at these symbols and my students go in and they're bis firing, some of them have to go in as a six, some of them as a extended seven. Let's talk about this little, the little ones. Okay. You're going to clean them exactly the same way. Be careful when you get to the fingers. There's cleaning tools later that we can use so we don't take our fingers off because you can bump them off. Let's see if there's a littler one. Aha. See, there's a littler one. Use the flat side. finish it here. Now let's just go ahead and discuss a few, couple little things. Remember I showed you the twins. There's this little doll here that little balls went up. They're both little German dolls and they, um, I think they were by Kestner. If I'm re right. But I want you to see how that mold worked. See, here's the recess. And here, if you look real carefully, right here is the ball that would go up into this little, this is the upper leg, the lower leg. And this is how they do it. Sometimes we have literally balls with holes in them, and then we have to pour them and make sure the holes line up. So, I sort of mentioned that porcelain shrinks at a different rate. And let's see, 
honey, you're going to lose your hair. Your wig. This is the exact same doll. Same mold. But look at the difference. It's shrunk. Okay. It will come out soft-fired this, this size. But when we bisque fire it or hot fire it, which is a six or a seven, it will shrink from 11 to 13 percent, depending on the type of slip and what it's made of, the consistency. So you can see the shrinkage is quite a bit. Here's her shoulder plate. This is a little doll called Nancy. I just poured this for a level one virtual seminar. And you can see, look at her little arms. Look at the difference in length. So it's really, you can see a doll this size, how it could collapse. A doll this size, this particular doll, has a wobble tongue. So you would also pour a tongue that we would insert into that mouth and that would come. We had, um, the Doll Artisan Guild is wonderful reference. And Linda, Linda just looked at me, so now, now I'm back. <laughs> Um, Linda, first of all, this, do you know what a program, a workshop like this is called? A seminar. <laughs> Being in full effect. That was so good. Thanks. Thank so you very good. Much. She, uh, she brought so much more than I even ever expected and dreamed as you always do. But Linda, that was amazing. Good. So, so wonderful. So I hope you out there enjoyed it so very much. I know the convention enjoyed this. So um, Linda wanted me to come in and and talk about this with her. So I'm not I'm not. That's fine. I want you to. <laughs> you want me to? Oh, let me get the, the me get our the, notes. Our notes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and explain it. Okay. This is a, these are awesome downloads the Dollar and Guild has, and you go to their website and go to the, almost the bottom and it say downloads. Um, I pull this out. It's called General Information Number 4, but it's called Casting, Dust-Free Cleaning, and Greenware Firing Greenware. This is exactly what we've talked about, except we're talking about firing to and cleaning the greenware. There's also another download called Attaching the Greenware Attachments and Repair. That's a little more advanced but you can also download that. It's only $3.95. And this download is $4.95. And? And this is, this is the, the wonderful part. Uh, the Doll Artists and Guild is giving everybody a $5 coupon code. It's DAG for VDC. And you will get $5 off. So you can have either one of these downloads that Linda just talked about for free with this code, compliments of the Doll Artisan Guild. So that is really nice. It, it is. And Very nice. Gives you a, a start and a little more information. And there's other downloads, great downloads. Um, oh, gee. There's, oh, so there's tons. Downloads, supplies, so, so many resources. I... One of the most fun I've ever had at a convention was the Doll Artisan Guild convention. We have a lot of fun. Yeah. And we learn. We Very learn from nice each people, other. Very nice people. Everything. So the Doll Artisan Guild, we have links in the video to, uh, to everything that you need to join and to see. And also, Linda's virtual classes are so wonderful. You can find those on Uniquely Yours Porcelain Dolls. What is the one you have coming mm. up? I, I'm teaching two different level ones which is the beginning level for anybody going into doll making. And I have a level one apprentice one, and then I, I'm finishing up a student on beautiful dolls. So 
uh, if you want to get involved, again, uniquely yours person dolls that will have links in the in the video. But this was awesome. Well, thank you, Linda. It was so great. Oh, I, I learned so much. Did you learn a lot? I know you did. I hope so. Yeah. Did you have fun? I did. Okay. I Good. did. Oh, this was great. And thank you, uh, thank you so much for being here. This was wonderful. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm glad. I hope. That, I just hope somebody learns and and goes and tries it. Yeah. And if you do, inspired by Linda's video, you must let us know. Yeah. We love when you tell us how it went. Mm -hmm. Good or bad, just tell us. Tell us that you tried. Yeah. There's no, Dad always told me that there's no failure in trying and, 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 fall, and falling on your face. It's not getting up and trying again. That's exactly it. And, and if you fail, at least you were in the ring. Yeah. Uh, and, you were and, playing. And with doll making, like, you have to... It doesn't come out right every time. Oh, no. Um, so <laughs> make sure that you know that out there. Yeah. Even I have yeah. problems. Right. So failure is going to happen. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it, it's, sometimes it's not even your fault. It's just the way, it, way the, the cookie crumbles. Mm -hmm. The way the bisque crumbles. It does. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that was amazing. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is Linda Wall here at Turn of the Century Antiques for the Shoot for the Stars Virtual Doll Convention. And we will see you at the next program. Bye.